get you to the vet tomorrow and see if there's something up with your respiratory system or whatever's going on with your sneezing. Maybe it's nothing, who knows. And you can see her feathers are pretty rough back here especially. One little scraggly tail feather there. <laughs> Well, look what we have here. Fresh Toucan merch with brand new designs. And what else? Our top contributors on Patreon. All this goes to the channel and helps rescue new birds in the future. Again, we could not do this without you guys and I can't thank you enough. Hey y'all. So, um, thought I'd try my hand this time at doing a all day, or all trip, not all day, vlog. <laughs> um, I'm on my way right now to Dallas to fly out of the airport tomorrow morning, very early, to go pick up the new bird. So <laughs> I just wanted to share that with all you guys and we're gonna share this whole trip and I promised you guys a vlog because I, I could not be doing this without you. Everyone, all of you guys paid, not only for the bird, but for this entire trip and it wouldn't be possible without you and I can't thank you enough. So hopefully this works out okay because I'm not going to be able to take any extra equipment with me and stuff like that like usual. But we're going to meet the bird for the first time. You guys are going to be able to see that. And um, I don't know, it's just going to be a lot of fun. So what we got, it's going to be interesting. I've never flown on a plane with a bird as a carry-on before. But um, we'll see what happens. Uh, Jamie Lee from Bird Tricks gave me some pointers. So <laughs> thanks, Jamie. But anyways... Well, you guys are going to be coming with me, and uh, we'll give updates soon, so stay tuned. Just doing a little light reading here. What is this? Hmm, okay. Oh. Huh. The Keel Bill Toucan. What a coincidence. Costa Rica. Oh, we can get this in focus. Oh, come on. There you go. Volcanoes, rainforests, toucans, and what is this? Keel Bill Toucans are very social creatures. Well, that is good news. And we have to go all the way across here, all the way to San Francisco. I think it's like a 3,600 mile round trip, so quite a ways. And then you've got to include, of course, the drive back to Louisiana. Hey guys, so we finally got the bird here. Um, we're gonna have to do things a little bit differently. I know you guys were probably hoping for a first meet type of thing, like we did with Ripley, or not Ripley, with Maeve and Tupac. Um, but she's a little more nervous and flighty and um, a little scared. So I'm trying, we've been trying to give her as much space as possible here. And um, it's okay. Trying to give her blueberries, just to get her warmed up here to, you know, it's completely new people, obviously. Um, her feathers are in pretty rough shape, but her beak looks pretty good, honestly. It looks pretty good. So, um, I don't know, we're, we're going to get her to the vet, the same vet that Tupac went to, um, that you guys saw not long ago like in a day so uh, I flew here I flew from Dallas to San Francisco as I said before and arrived here at like 3 p.m. and it is now like 6 or 7 and I'm flying back again tomorrow morning at like 7 a.m. so um, I mean we I wasn't even here in San Francisco for a day you know, it was like maybe 15 hours, but we have her. It's okay. You want some? Good girl. She's definitely a girl based on how she looks. But she's sneezing a lot, which is making me nervous. 
Um, but the way that she hops and tries to fly, she can't fly, but the way that she hops and everything looks normal, that's good. And for the most part, she's behaving pretty normally, but you can never trust that with a bird. Birds are always a little bit um, sneaky about being potentially sick. And I'm not gonna say that she's sick or anything now, but her sneezing does make me a little nervous. But we're gonna get her in this little, I don't know if you guys can see this, I got a blanket for her. This is as big as the airline will allow. So I'm hoping to just, I know it's, it looks really small and it's gonna suck, but um, it beats driving 30 hours, which is what I had to do with Tupac. And I don't wanna leave Tupac and Maeve alone for days. I can't do that now, so you want you want some pellets? No. See that's one of the reasons I didn't want to do that. But we're gonna do a little vlog thing like we're doing. Hope maybe we'll film at the bed a little bit and uh we'll see you guys in a bit when we get back. You're so beautiful, aren't you? You're gonna be even more beautiful when you get fixed up. Got that got a nice blue on the bottom mandible there. And that little flame coming in. And she likes blueberries, of course, but what toucan doesn't? All right, so it's the next day and um, she made it through the night pretty well. She was pretty, pretty uh, flighty and uh, crazy a little bit, you know, but she eventually calmed down and relaxed and uh, went to sleep and I didn't have her in an enclosure or carry or anything so it worked out pretty well. She ate some blueberries, ate a little bit of Missouri, that kind of thing. So we're at the airport now and we should be boarding her in the next, like, I don't know if you guys can see her or not in there. It's kind of, kind of nasty in there. She got really scared at first. There you are. But it worked out. So we got past security. Maybe we're the first people ever to take a toucan as a carry-on. But um, she made it, and she's fairly relaxed now. So hopefully she doesn't get freaked out much more. She was a little nervous this morning for sure. But uh, this little carrier that I have her in is soft enough where she can't hurt herself, thankfully. So hopefully she'll eat a little bit and. Um, We'll be boarding here in a little while and next time I see you we will either be at the vet or at home I might record a little bit at vet so we'll just see what happens but see you guys in a bit She's very scared and flighty and doesn't really like to be touched that much, but I've managed to give her <clears throat> a few blueberries and she's letting me kind of scratch her on the head and around her eye. So she's not really wanting to step up or anything, but at least her letting me touch her is good. Um, I can feel some the feathers on the very top of her head right here are a little stiff like she's been discharging something out of her nose and then you can see a lot of her feathers back here are kind of wiry and just nap like just not in the best shape <laughs> her feathers are all kind of not as soft as like they should oh it's okay as they should be. You're alright. You're about to poop. That's okay. We'll clean it up.
It's okay. You're very beautiful. If you eat that, you can have this one. See, she's like kind of crouching down a little bit and like uh, her legs are kind of spread apart. She's very nervous. She was more relaxed a second ago. We're going to get you to the vet tomorrow and see if there's something up with your respiratory system or whatever's going on with your sneezing. Maybe it's nothing, who knows. There's definitely, like, her feathers for sure feel more wiry than they should. You can lay your head down. Usually they like it right up under like where their skull is right here. Get little scratches. Kind of right around where that skin is. You can't really tell unless you look really close, but this whole area right here is skin. It's just yellow skin, kind of like Maeve and Tupac's is orange and blue. But hers is all yellow with a little bit of green around her eyelid. You can see what I was talking about earlier if you kind of look. Definitely looks like something's been coming out of her nostrils there maybe. See that? And her feathers just generally look a little more stiff and wiry than they should. I don't think it's something specific to He'll build two cans by any means because Maven, it's all right, it's all right. Maven Tupac's feathers are both the same consistency, they're both like very soft and fine. You're all right, and then you can see her feathers are pretty rough back here, especially. One little scraggly tail feather there. <laughs> Time for the vet. Here we go. You're all right.
going? Hey, how you doing? So we just got back from the vet. There's not much <clears throat> we could have really filmed there. Um, there's not much that's really new aside from what I suspected. Um, looks like she does have a respiratory infection. She's going to need a couple different antibiotics and things like that. I'll go over that more when we get home. We're about to head back home um, for her first time there. But she's calm down. If she's in her enclosure like this, or this little carrier here that we took her to the vet in, she's pretty friendly. She likes to get pet, but she seems really scared when she's outside more so. So, oh yeah. But they cleared her sinuses out, and I'll have to show you guys when we get back what that looked like, because it was pretty disgusting. Apparently there was a lot of crap up in her nasal cavity that had to be flushed out but well, we're gonna make the three four hour drive home tonight in a little bit you're all right you're all right you want a blueberry there you go and we'll get back to you well we are back home finally it's been a few days um, I just wanted to take some time to get fully set up and have her get a little acclimated and stuff before I did the last part of this video um, so she does have a respiratory infection um, the vet confirmed that she spent the day with the vet they did a lot of things. They, uh, I had her pluck. Uh, you can see her feathers do, they look quite a bit better. They look a lot better now. But, um, I had the vet pluck her tail feathers that were all broken and mangled. You want a blueberry? There you go. They were all broken and mangled and all that kind of stuff. So she could quickly regrow them. Her wings are clipped. Um, probably, I mean, she can still fly a, a decent amount, so it's probably not worth plucking her feathers out as well. Her uh, flight feathers, I mean, I think it's just her secondaries, but, you want another one? But, I know it's been a little traumatizing for her, unfortunately, because she's on, I have to give her medicine four times a day, in two different ways. The first way is, um... Through a little syringe like this. Yeah, I know you're not going to like that. I'm sorry. Are you cold? Why are you shaking? Are you scared? It's okay. She's still a little scared. She won't step up. She runs from me. It's gotten a little better. She'll let me touch her and stuff and that sort of thing. But, you know, it's, she's going to need some behavioral work more than anything. I think she'll get past this respiratory infection. Oh, which reminds me, she's got, I forgot to say the second type. The second way she gets medicine is through something called a nebulization chain, chamber. And I'm going to do a video on this specifically. I'm going to put up a picture right now so you just see what it looks like. But I'll do a video of that specifically because uh, I think it's kind of interesting the way it works. Basically, it vaporizes the medicine and then she breathes it directly into her lungs so that it the her lungs get the antibiotics um directly so she's a lot better she's not sneezing nearly as much now that she's been on this medicine you can see that she's been pretty quiet here she does breathe a little heavy her nostrils okay this is something i do want to show you guys <laughs> give me a second because i have it her nostrils were completely clogged to where she couldn't even breathe out of her nostrils. She had to breathe out of her mouth. So, um, this is what they removed. I don't know if you can really see it on camera as well. See the gunk and stuff? Um, Dr. Thielen told me that basically that they removed 
so much gunk out of it. They wish they would have taken a video. I wish they would have too. And it, it looked basically like earwax and all this nastiness that came out and debris, dust, feather dander, I'm sure. Um, so luckily it didn't get bad enough to where it was solidified like it is with Tupac. Her nostrils are clear now. You can hear she's still kind of whistling when she breathes. I don't know if you can hear it or not. It's okay. Um, but yeah, she's home now. We'll be doing videos with her. Um, she won't be with the other birds for obvious reasons. She's going to be quarantined for, yeah, well, at least a month. And then depending on what her cultures and blood and stuff like that looks like, the vet should probably call me in the next couple days and then I'll have an update for you guys. But um, from what the vet said, if if she had remained with this infection for too much longer, then she probably would have died. So, um I feel bad saying this because I know that her previous owner is probably going to watch this video, and but I want to be completely honest with you guys, you know, it seemed, f from what I heard, it looked like she may have been living in a guinea pig cage for a while with like two perches, I think that's what she said, I could be wrong, um, her other enclosure looked to be like African grey sized, which is too small for a toucan, you know, um, she's definitely... I mean, I don't even need to ask questions to know that she hasn't really been out of the cage because the way that she behaves is she's just, she's absolutely terrified to come out of her enclosure. So that's why I've been putting her on the stand. But one, so she can have a positive experience being outside the cage. She's not getting medicine. But two, so she can get used to seeing me and being outside of the cage because in our house the birds are very rarely in the cage unless I'm not home. However, right now both Tupac and Maeve have to sleep in their enclosures because they cannot come back here while she's in quarantine and I feel horrible for Tupac because he usually always, sometimes Maeve doesn't, but Tupac always sleeps back here with me and this like this is Maeve's perch up here and then Tupac usually has a stand next to my bed but, and then she has this little quarantine enclosure in the bathroom. And believe it or not, I just changed those papers a few hours ago. <laughs> but um, she's spending time outside of the quarantine cage right now uh, in my room here. far As far away from the other birds as possible. And uh, that's about it, guys. You know, she's She's got some issues. It doesn't look like she's malnourished. Her beak looks really good. Her feathers look good, like good color-wise. When they when they get malnourished, you can tell because their beak gets really pastel and like washed out and just looks really ugly. But her beak looks pretty good. With a little sunlight, it's really gonna pop. So, and her eyes are beautiful. Her her feathers were nappy, but you know, it's probably just from not having enough room to move around in and not having a bath and god knows how long i gave her a bath um i've given her a bath twice now actually but she's a beautiful girl and her name is you guys probably saw this on instagram but her name is beatrix uh named after uma thurman's character in kill bill now you know so a lot of you guys guessed what her name was gonna be so, like, Kill Bill, Kill Bill, get it? Kill Bill. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll be here all night. <laughs> I'm hilarious. But you guys know how I like names like that, like strong female characters. That's what Ripley and Maeve were named after, of course. So, following in their footsteps, she will be named Beatrix. So, I hear Tupac hopping down the hallway. <laughs> He's probably coming back here. So, I need to get back to the other birds and uh, give her her medicine and that's about it guys but we'll see you guys real soon and i can't thank you enough for coming on this adventure with me